here. And uh, these guys, this, you know, one minute to go. This is this is this is game time for them. And so, uh, all the nerves are, are fluttering. But once that gun goes off, it's it's all game on. Yeah, and uh, we're about 30, 40 seconds away from the start, so they're getting back in their corrals, limbering up just as much as possible. It's, it's a long wait. They have such a great time here on the Nike uh, campus uh, throughout the week here in Portland. But this is what it's all about when it comes boiling down to. Last yawns to get oxygen to the brain. Go so. 30 so. 30 so. Them all the American Fork, certainly one of the favorites. The Woodlands, one of the great programs in the country. Probably the two big highs for the weekend, obviously. One is obviously the race, and then also the dance and talking to the kids beforehand. They're saying, hey, right now we're focused only on the race. Afterwards, it's about all having fun, but right now it's race time. We were talking to Frankie Ruiz from Miami Havana, saying, you know, he's kept telling the team over and over again, enjoy it after the race. Enjoy after the race. Don't get caught up so much in the fun ahead of time that you dissipate some of that energy. We've seen teams over the years when they arrive to NXN, there's all the all the physical the pageantry of the event. They get so caught up in it, they forget it's a national championship. Everyone here is coming in ready to run. So if you don't have your A game, you'll get thrown out the back door. 199 runners lined up at her Portland Meadows, awaiting the gun. Futsum Zenosalase from the Midwest, certainly one of the race favorites. Tony Smorgowitz from the Heartland. Bronze medalist in the ITU World Junior Triathlon Championship behind Lucas Versbikas in September in Beijing. Here we go. Just past Danny Martinez, California individual in the green and white. American Fork, orange over blue. And they are away. The boys championship race, the 2011 Nike Cross Nationals. And it's a great opening array, Dathan. There's plenty of room for everyone to find it, but there's none of that desperate, I've got to get to that first turn. Yeah, but with so many people, sometimes this is the densest field that these guys have been into. And so sometimes you can just find yourself being buried, even though uh, you know that's something you're maybe not used to throughout the rest of the year. There's so many, we said, there's so many state champions, so many top runners who have dominated their regions and their leagues, their conferences, that they're not used to running in a pack. And sometimes you can get caught up. Definitely. You know, it's a bit, bit of adversity here. This is the first time you mentioned they're going to have company at the front of a pack. How they respond, how they adjust, how they keep composure is going to be real, real important, especially in early going here. Well, we've talked to Tony Smorgowitz earlier, and we, one of the things he said last year is he's the top returning finisher from last year. He finished ninth last year. And he said one of the problems was that he just went out too slow and he didn't get himself in, into the mix well enough, and he's not going to make that mistake. I think Daniel Vertiz from Texas also said that was a mistake he made. So it's very much on the minds of these athletes that what they have to do is go out and go out hard and give themselves a place. We've got ourselves a, an early leader. Yeah, you know, in any sort of case competition in cross country, familiarity basically is a nice advantage, whether it be in course conditions or also just knowing the course. So the returnees coming back, definitely they have a bit more, more calmness coming in and have well, from experience, they know they need some adjustments based on that, you know, compared to last year. Chris Olinska, you're in the lead gator. Who do we have? How's it look out there? I don't, I don't know have the name of this runner, but the runner from Manlius, he's Nick Ryan. He's uh, making a big surge. Maybe he's feeling the adrenaline from the gun and the spirit from his team to get out there and get a low stick. But uh, the individual qualifiers seem to be kind of holding back, watching each other, seeing, measuring what what each are going to do so it's going to be an interesting race it's still early a lot can happen has the pack pretty much just allowed him to get a, get away a little bit they definitely let him uh, cut the tie they obviously believe they can reel him in later but uh, the main packs running pretty slow bumping around watching each other and uh, Nick is out here on his own free running you know maybe this is a good strategy uh, get through this mud as easy as possible and when it gets dry let, it, let his stride extend and hopefully extend his lead. Thanks, Chris. And we can see Nick Ryan, of course, from Manly as he's a junior. He was 28th rich last year. 
and he said, you know, they graduated a lot of seniors off last year's squad, and not a lot of expectations coming into the 2011 season. They've exceeded their expectations. Well, they always come in actually with very good expectations, and the Manlius program, they have great pride, great coaching staff. Now, Nick Ryan is no surprise. He's toward the front. A bit of a surprise he's out this far in front. He does project to be a top 10 finisher today, and obviously he's got a plan as to what he wants to do to try and help control some of the pace, possibly for his teammates as well. So we'll see how it all shakes out. Well, 211 opening opening split last year, it was 220. So that was really, really sloppy conditions. And uh, we can see that there's an there's definitely an opening. Uh, Dathan, you were a hard charger, as I recall, in, in your in your days in high school, and you really put the pressure on. What's what's the mindset there for an athlete to make this sort of early move, or is this just pretty much standard issue for him? Well, some people, you know, they really feel comfortable when they're out in front like that, but this is a, definitely a huge lead, and uh, you don't see this very often this early on the race. Now he's coming into the whoop de doos here, so we'll see if these guys kind of uh, build up some momentum and, and try to get these a little faster because he is way out in front right now, and and uh, that's a long ways to run, though. We see right now Zinis Alassi currently in second. It looks like Vertiz from Texas, our, North, our South Region champion, was in the top four as well. But there's a bit of a gap for sure between Nick and the rest of the field. Well, Dathan, he's making them make decisions at a time they really don't want to. Yeah, sometimes you got to adapt your race plan like that. These guys might not have uh, anticipated someone going out quite this hard. And so now you see the, the gap starting to close down, though. And I think that they, uh, they got a little uncomfortable with how far ahead he was getting. Well, you can see, again, on television, the two-dimensional doesn't give you as really an insight as how far that lead is. It's always longer in person when you're looking at it than television represents. And Footsom's got a bit of a lead in second place as well, Rich. So he's really changed the nature of, uh, of this race right off the bat. He's got about a four stride lead on Luis Gutierrez from California. So still, once again, as you mentioned, actually in person here is a bit closer, not quite as bad. And you got a really dense field of chasing right here. Well, how serious is, is Nick Ryan as a contender to take this all the way home? Again, he projects to be top 10, top 12. At the very front, it's a bit of a surprise. If he finishes in the top five at the tail end of that, it would not be a surprise. But did I pick him as a winner? No way. No way at all. We'll now, see how holds up. Now, one of the things we've attempted to do is try to give every fifth runner on their team a, a red a wristband. So we can try to identify the fifth runner on any particular team. Now, of course, there's gloves being worn out there and arm warmers. So hopefully we'll be able to see any red wristbands will represent the fifth, the projected fifth runner on every team. Right, and that band's just worn just above the elbow. Once again, it's more at home for that chase gator to give you a perspective of how things are developing in the pack. Because as we know in cross country, the four and five scorers, if they're a little bit off, it makes a big difference in points total. Whereas if you're a front runner, if you're off, if you're off 10 seconds, it, may, it might be a few points. If you're a five man off 10 seconds, it might be 35, 40 points. Considering that Manly's is one of the strong teams, they were the runner up last year at NXN, is it more or less likely that some of their top man would have such a bold move? That seems a little unusual for a team that's in contention. Yeah, you would think that that might be that might be a strange strategy, but at the same time, if the, if the rest my of the team knows going in that they think he's going to do that, then uh, they might be able to keep the race off that as well. It's interesting. Hopefully, after the race, we'll be able to talk to Nick, irrespective of how it all turns out, to say, was this was this a plan that coaches uh, Bill and John Harris had decided on to put a little bit of pressure just to change things up a little bit? Because if you, if, if you, you always want to let other people run your race, isn't that part of the strategy? For people that don't watch it, well, everyone watches the sport who's watching the show, but you're trying to get people to run your race. Yeah, and sometimes you just find yourself in a position, though, where you, you're not doing the race that you thought you were going to do, and so uh, this this could be the case for him. He, he might have planned this, but he might just find himself out in front. You see right now, it looked like in that last shot that we had up Nick Ryan, the, the sting in his stride was going to go away a little bit. The arm carriage is a little bit lower here. He might be feeling a bit more of the fatigue from that early start, but we'll see how tough he is, and we'll see if anyone tries to close the gap and really make him feel the heat of that fast, aggressive start, and we can see foots foot him now moving into the screen here, trying to close that gap. Footsum, Senator Salase, the, the favorite in the race, along with Tony Smorgowitz, who we have not seen yet on screen. Of course, Footsum from Indianapolis. He is a senior, and he is moving in Eritrean background. His uh, parents came, his dad came to the United States in 2003. His, he, his mom, and his brother came in 2007. He's had a green card for a year and a half, and he really is the hunter right now. He definitely is, but I don't think he's, he has so much confidence from his great season this year. I don't think he'll be thrown off by this. He knows there's plenty of racing still to go. It looked like in our chase pack, Tony Schmugmas was among those three, running three abreast. So obviously he's closing the gap as well. There's a 
Yeah, William Morrison, one of the top American foreign cross country runners. And again, they're one of the top teams all year long, but you mentioned it earlier on, their state meet was so long ago that you, uh, Dathan, you lose cohesion. That's, that's a tough thing to come back from when you're almost two months out from your state meet, because that's what they really peaked for, and, and they're, they could be just trying to hold on. But um, if they regrouped and they uh, their coach is smart, then uh, they, can, they can maybe rally back up for this race as well. Well, here it is at 740 into the race. Footsum Zenesalase has now gone by. Ryan from Manly is to take the lead, and he's a guy, they give him that sort of gap, and they're not gonna get a wrench. That's right, definitely. He is a strength runner. So for him to come from behind on this kind of a course, he is fine. He's the one that's now taking control. They're looking to see where Smartbooks is at, and how much he has left, and how he reacted. He mentioned before the race the fact that he had to have some sort of flexibility in a race plan. You can't come in just too locked into one thing. So we'll see how that experience pays off here. We also said he went out too slowly <laughs> last year, so here was the opportunity. Nick Ryan went, and you would have thought that he would have put his, you know, his, his, his sights right on Futsum Zenesalase, who is just, once again, just this magnificent athlete. And Nathan, he's a very mature physique. Yes, he looks really strong. You know, sometimes you'll see a, a great range of people in high school, guys who maybe haven't developed, and they're, they're very small, very skinny, but he looks very muscular, very strong for, uh, for his age. And just look at that direct back, the low arm carry. I mean, it's just... Great, great form. He looks very strong. Yeah, efficient, strong. The, the, the total package. So he's but, got right now about a 15 or 20 meter lead currently on Nick Ryan. But again, if you look on paper at what he's done this year, he is a heavy favorite. The question mark really is Smurgowitz. He's been holding back a little bit. And the big question is, you know, how much is he going to have in the tank? What has he been hiding so far this year? Because he has great credentials. Right, exactly. But this is a dominant performance by Zena Selassie from Indianapolis. He hasn't decided where he's going to go to school yet for, for college. Uh, Coach Rick Snover was telling me that this is his 13th race of the season. That's a lot, Nathan, isn't it? When you pack in a, a season that, that starts in August for a lot of these guys and ends in December, it's just a long, long grind. And, uh, and so sometimes they can feel the fatigue at the end of the season. But uh, some of these really strong guys, I think some of these triathlete guys, they might have that aerobic background, too, that, uh, that can Wow, he looks just amazing going through there. He's, I mean, he's not looking back. He's just all forward. He's trying to skirt the mud by on, going on the inside. And it's just, he's just driving. He looks like Nick Ryan in that in an early section where he's just getting faster and faster, accelerating, accelerating, opening that lead even farther. Yeah, not fighting that mud sometimes is hard to do. Uh, you know, that, that can just kind of suck you and pull you around. And, yeah, One of our fifth place runners right there on the screen. You can see the armband on his left arm, that red armband. So he's looking for other guys with that red armband. Everyone you want to cover. You just want to cover every guy you've got in order to try to get his money points. And there's Carroll over Lincroft at the 3K split, 92 to 106. It's very interesting also in fourth, Palatine. They're in that large entry from the Midwest. And look at them right now currently in fourth. One and two, no surprise. A bit of a surprise in Davis in third. Davis and American Fork, the two great teams from Utah. American Fork won the regional. And again, both of those, that long layoff of two months. You know, put in perspective as far as the long layoff, the teams that competed last weekend's regionals, if, if they had the same schedule, they wouldn't actually race at nationals until after the Super Bowl of the NFL. And that kind of a layoff really, really plays with uh, your sharpness. So it is the Texas team in front. We are and the they were definitely we somebody we expected to be giving Lincroft a fight for because Lincroft's got that, that tremendous depth where they can interchange. But they've all been in the top four in the past. Have been, they've switched off top guys. But uh, they're going to be tough because they don't, they don't, they're not dependent on just one or two guys. If you look at the resumes for both teams of this year, I would say Carroll has a better resume overall. But because of this course and the uniqueness of it, he gave a bit of the edge to Christian Brothers. Uh, Lincroft from the Northeast, they're used to this kind of stuff. However, because the course is not as bad as usual, a lot of talk the last 24 hours thinking, you know what, this might play back into favor for Carroll. And right now they're showing that a long way to go still. 11 minutes, 40 seconds into the 2011 Boys Ch Championship race here in the Portland Meadows. Carroll Cross Country from Texas leading Lincroft Cross Country out of New Jersey. Carroll, the South region winner by 65 points, averaging 15.56 for that 5K with a 30-second spread. 
that's pretty stunning stuff. It is. They've actually really completely, completely blown away Texas competition this year. Texas not as strong as usual, but regardless, the margins of victory they've been throwing down really are eye-opening. Well, it's their fifth appearance here at NXN. They were 17th in 2010, 15th in 2007, 11th in 2006, and 14th in 2004. So they've been here throughout the years, but they really haven't even gotten close to the podium. Now they're looking for that top step. Right, and you can't compare previous years to this one. This squad is easily on paper the best squad we've seen from this high school, from, from Carroll in a cross-country club. And they're actually handling this challenge, responding very, very well. We saw Palatine, we saw their fifth winner, Tim Mankey, was actually in pretty good position, probably through in a recent shot. Again, as in that large, and we've seen the Midwest teams year after year show very well here. And their at-large team right now is in the top five, basically battling for a podium position. That's incredible. Well, right now, let's put some Zenas Alase, who took the lead at seven minutes and 40 seconds seconds into this race off Nick Ryan from Manly is out of New York has stretched his lead throughout has not been challenged and he's only a couple of minutes away from winning the national championship at NXN he's on the far side of the course he's making that big left hand loop and then as he finishes that loop they'll just be a pretty much like a hundred meter stretch to the finish line there's the hay bales I was going over that. We've seen people go down hard in the past here, but with the soft dirt, they don't hurt themselves. But we've seen people full of faces of mud. It brings it back to that real European style cross country, though, where the mud and the, and the jumps, and it, it makes it a lot more exciting. Well, Footsum takes a quick look back and sees nothing. <laughs> I mean, he is just roaring away. 13 minutes and 42 seconds. Now, last year, uh, the winning time was 15.59 under the sloppy conditions by Lucas Verspikas. Two years ago, it was Craig Lux in 15.09. That shows that big spread that what conditions can mean. Most definitely. Looks like right now, Daniel Vertiz, the South champion, is among that pack of three. Caught a glimpse. Tony Smrungbuts appeared to be in fifth place out of South Dakota, the Heartland region champion. From Rapid City, South Dakota. Uphill. Chris uh, Salif's got on the lead vehicle. This kid looks like a powerhouse. He could go right to the NCAAs. He would do really well in the NCAAs right now. Uh, he looks like he's out for a temper run with his teammates, only there's no teammates around. He uh, he has hardly any strain on his face, and uh, it looks like he's just going to, I don't know what the time's going to be, but he's moving pretty good, and he, he's going to be close to that course record. He's gone into another gear, foot some Zana Salasa. You know, he's Eritrean background like Med Kupleski, Zerzane Tedese, one of his great heroes, the world record holder at the half marathon, the world cross country champion. And look at this guy roll, coming down to the line. Put some Zenasalase. Followed Nick Ryan out for the first two kilometers and then broke him, broke free, and has never been challenged and becomes the 2011 National NXN Cross Country Champion in 15 minutes and four seconds unofficially, a new course record. Goodness me, Footsome just flew. And couple domination, it is Daniel Vertiz out of Texas. He's the one in the light blue and the white in second here. Craig Nowak, he's got great leg speed, also from Texas, trying to close that gap. Nowak with a kick. Vertiz holds on at 15-26. Like Nick Ryan of Manley has held on for fifth, it appears. Well, it was a great run. Number 209, Zachary Harriet from the Midwest came across that line. Throw up, throw up. We're going to get somebody out. Number 248, Nicholas Taylor on the screen. Once again, you're looking for those red armbands representing the fifth runner. And so many times, that is where the points and the podium exist. Well, I think we found out today, guys, it is a very fast Portland Meadows racetrack today. Definitely, it's going to get challenging, and I think, obviously, Nick Ryan really opened up that pace, bringing it out quickly, but, of course, that did not face foot some things lossy whatsoever. It's amazing, as we continue to watch runners stream across this finish line, Lauren Fleshman's got our champion. He's already recovered, Lauren. Oh. Lauren, if you've got foot some, go right ahead. Okay. All right, he's got to, well, bless his heart, he's got to cool down. I was hoping if he would recover that quickly. But uh, you can see what it takes out of these athletes. Uh, Dathan, I can't recall the first time I ever saw you finish a cross-country race standing up. I mean, you always just laid it all in the line, and that's the beauty of the cross-country at this age. These yes. kids just give 
everything they have to the effort. And I think, you know, especially, like you say, at this age, these kids, this means so much to them, especially at this level. And you really see these guys pour it out there. I mean, they're just wiped out afterwards. And then they see their teammates here, and it's just an, it's an incredible feeling. And, and I think that these guys, these guys just show the real, real pure part of the sport here. Still yeah. waiting for that Ritzenheim flop right at the finish line, the trademark <laughs> flop. Well, no, I mean, it was like it's, it's all out there to be had. You leave nothing. The whole idea to race is to have nothing left at the line. Yes, I think, you know, these guys, the, they can do it a little bit more now, you know, when it's when it's really, uh, when they're young and they, they, they are excited about it. You know, those those real all-out efforts, they, they come uh, few and far between as you get older. Right, because there's always something ahead. There's always something ahead. But these kids, this is it. This is the season ender for a lot of these kids. It might be the career ender, the high point of their career. And that's, and that's what it really means. We talk about this at the NCAA level. That a lot of times that, that people realize that they may not go 